This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight and we start off with an interview we did a while back with Stephen Kravitz. That's Stephen Kravitz. What are you all bundled up for? What is that? You look like you're going skiing, are you? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm freezing. Hey, nice new backdrop. Yeah, you like that? I just, it's and, its nighttime here in New York City. <laughs> and all the time. All the time, yeah. Well, this is, show runs at night, so I'm using the, that that background. That's very cool. I also, that's a green screen I got back here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all, all technical wizardry that I do here. Isn't it wonderful? Anyway, yeah. how, how you doing? Look, you're all bundled up. You're cold, which means right. that you don't have heat. No, I have heat, but my bill last month was oh. three hundred dollars. I think we talked about that. Mine, mine gets up around three hundred too, somewhere in that area. But I've got twenty five hundred square feet here, and what have you got? Right. You know, oh, I don't know, fifteen. Oh boy. Why is it cost? Is that just the cost of electricity in your neck of the woods, which is up in uh, up in Massachusetts? Yeah, it's um, it's gas heat, and it's an old building, and it doesn't really heat the whole apartment. No, I see. It's a, oh, it's a gas bill. Yeah, I thought gas was cheaper than electricity. So did I. <laughs> So did I. Now wait a minute. Hold on a second. You're, number one, you're not working, okay? Right. Thank you're, you. You're, Thank uh, you for pointing that out. You're on. You're on some kind of disability, aren't you? Yes. All right. So can't you apply to the state to get your electricity or your gas for less? They must have some kind of compassionate deal there, where if you're on disability, you don't have to pay the kind of money you're paying for gas. Well, I'll have to look into that. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. No, I would do that because I, I can't imagine they don't have some kind of program for that because they don't want, like, people who are disadvantaged or have disabilities or who are seniors freezing to death during the winter. I will officially become a senior on Saturday. It, on Saturday you will be a senior? I turned, I turned 65. Is that Does that make you a senior? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I I see. I know at eighty one I'm a senior. I have yeah, no. Oh yeah. I have no excuse for not saying I'm a senior. No, but, you're an older cocker. But it took me a while to say I was a senior. <laughs> yeah, but everything kicks in at sixty five. Yeah, but you know what I didn't do? I, I got a, it, just my ego would not allow me to do this. When I hit sixty five, I was in California. And you go to the movies, and at 65, you can get a cheaper price to get in. Right. I refused to ask for it. I just didn't want to admit to myself that I had reached that. Plus, I had a woman I was going out with at the time who was in college. So, Not a boy. That's so, the Alex we love. Well, she was in college. She was actually in her 40s, but she'd gone back to college. Okay. But I just didn't want to go in to the theater and ask for a senior and a student, please. <laughs> 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 so my ego would not let me do that. So for the long time. And then one day I said, fuck it. I said, everything's, be you know, you get things better when you, you know, when it's Sure, free. when you cop to it. Yeah, exactly. So. so I qualify for the COVID virus starting next week. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. You do? All right. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, um, boy, somebody's trying to call in here, and I've got to remove them, and all these things are coming up. No, I don't want to report it. See that, folks? All that stuff comes up. 
Um, I'm going to have to tell this guy not to not to constantly try calling me. Uh, and he calls you during the show. Well, this is a guy. I don't know he's in uh, he's in Norway or some place like that. And anytime he sees that I'm online, he tries to get online. See, there he goes again. Don't admit him. Okay, I won't do it. I'll just let him sit there. Uh, you know, unless you want to talk to him, in which case no. I can admit him and you can talk to Norway. You want to talk to Norway? Yeah. Uh, the trouble is I'm using a format here where everything that comes up on screen comes up on our screen. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay, but it looks better and it's in sync and everything. Like I don't, I don't want to go into the technology of this, but it's just, it's, it's so much technology I have to do that it's right. It, it drives me nuts now, you know. But that, you built you you built up a nice studio from scratch. Yeah, but you know something, I should at my age be able to go. How does this newfangled thing work? I don't, <laughs> you know, I I, I don't have just but anyway. Um, but um, so you're hitting 65. Yep. Young little Stephen Kravitz, the kid. Right. Is turning 65. Who would have thought I last this long? Well, I mean, you know, it, it, the old saying goes: If I knew I was gonna last this long, I would have done all those drugs years ago. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Well, I still. I don't know about that. The drug. Well, I never got into it. I, I had. Did I ever have a problem with drugs is my question. I, I should ask you. You're the expert. Did I have a trouble problem with drugs? The only one that knows that is you, Alex. I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. You no. know, you have to decide whether you... Do you did you have a problem with Coke? But, uh, I, did, uh, I did Coke a lot, you know. Did you have a problem with it? Uh, did I have a problem with it? Um, yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, what happened was I was doing it all the time. Right. Okay, and I was watering it down. I only did about, oh, how much? About, I don't know. I, 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 I maybe did a couple of thousand dollars a year in Coke. That wasn't a lot, if you think no, about it. No, that's nothing. But I also, I cut it with, like, stuff, you know, so that it would go further. Uh, really? And, and not be as strong. Right. You know, but I still did. I did it constantly. Constantly had this little, this little uh, thing. When you remember the thing with the pet cock on it? Yeah. The bu uh, the bullet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that I could like palm it, and even at dinner go, yeah. <laughs> nobody right, would see right. me doing it. Right, 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 right. So right, I, right. I was at that point, right? Now ask me how I quit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How'd you quit? I moved to Florida. <laughs> Why well, you had no connection? Well, that's the point. I mean, I tell people I quit by moving to Florida, and they go, "How could you possibly quit? Florida was like where all the cocaine came in." Right, 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 right. right. But it was just that number one, it wasn't as easy to find. Right. And uh, I just figured I'll, I'll stop when I run out, and I ran out at the Florida border. I said it, so I ran out at the Florida border. And then I, I went to work, and I just, somehow I didn't do it, you know, because I didn't have access to it. And I figured, my problem was I never quit because I figured, oh, it'll be really difficult to quit. And it wasn't, right. it wasn't that difficult, you know. No, it's not. It's psychologically difficult, yeah. cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and heroin is physically yeah. and psychologically difficult. Well, I mean, there there's a physical... Uh, here comes this guy again. God damn it. I wish I could just block him. Uh, I think I will. Uh, but uh, Have you actually talked to him? Huh? Have you actually ever talked to him? Yes, I have. You know. Uh, uh, this is a guy that calls the show from Norway, and you can barely understand what he has to say. And he, uh, his, his, his uh, connection always breaks down. And uh, he's annoying. He's just purely annoying. Like right now, I'm trying to interview you, and his name right. keeps coming up and keeps coming up at the top of right. the screen up here. And uh, it's only because I'm using a system to do this that just simply recreates the screen. All right. right. 
so that right. anything that comes up on the screen in here, like if I were to bring this up, people will see it. Watch this, folks. See that? Right. Comes up, comes in. Uh, I have another system I can use where it's not that way, but it's just more kind of like uh, um, it's not as in sync as it should be. But I, 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 I can go to that. I can change that to Kravitzing. And then I can go, uh, bum, 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 bum. there we go. And uh, now you see probably, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in sync enough. As long as we stay in sync, we'll be fine. And then we don't have to see this guy's name keep coming up. So. We're in sync. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all, all the technology, folks, all in the technology. So well, tell me how you did the green. You got a green screen. Yeah, I had a green screen. And then you what? You project the picture on there? Yeah, I have a uh, what, what the green screen. You know what a green screen does, right? Yes. yes it yes, it, yes. it basically, in case people don't know, it, the background here is green. All right. right. Uh, and uh, what it does is that I can then superimpose anything on the green screen. Right. And the reason it's a green screen is, is there's, it, I had a blue screen once I used. You could use a red screen. You could use right. any of those things, but you don't because look at me and look at you. Right. Do you, do you see any green on us? No. So if somebody shows up wearing green, well, this is green, but this is a dark green. Right. All right. So if anybody shows up wearing green, like green pants, the, suddenly their pants will disappear and this will show up. <laughs> you know, so. I wish I had a pair of green pants. But what it does is it literally keys me, uh, because if I turn this off, all you'll see is green. Okay. Right. So everything that's green has the picture that I select superimposed right. on it, and there we are. And Now, where it, else can we be besides New York? Well, I'm not going to do it now, but I could, uh, well, let me see here. Uh, 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 let me let me go here. You you, re, you really want to do this, huh? Yeah, sure. You you want you want this? Uh, well, I have to go to the backgrounds, okay, that they have here, right. and then I will have to change them. This one I was using for a while because that's kind of like neutral and not too noisy, right? Right, very uh, much. But if I want to go to downtown New York at night, here we go. Oh, there you go. See, or if you want to go to Hawaii. Let's go to Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Uh, or we can just uh, use my logo here. All right. Oh, there you go. Or we can use a, a, that version of it or that version of it. Wait a minute. There's another version of it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We can do that. All right. Or we can do that. Okay. That's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. So that's our, uh, or I can go to my, one of my rooms in the house. Here we go. This is the living room right here. Really? Yeah, right. You know. Um, so uh, anyway, that's uh, that's how it works, folks. And back to New York. There we go. Yeah. Phew. There we are. See? So, isn't that fun? That was actually uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. I, I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. I like to stop in Hawaii. <laughs> There goes your phone again. Yeah. So let's talk about you turning 65. How do you feel about that? I'm kind of weirded out about it. Yeah? What weirds you, know, you, weird you out about it? I don't know. You know, when I turned 60, it didn't bother me. When I turned 50, 40, whatever, mm -hmm. it never bothered me. This one kind of bothers me. Yeah. It means I am an elder cocker. You are I'm an, an old elder. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to? Uh, uh, will you, you'll admit it, of course, to all the places where you get in cheaper, right? Oh, of course. But oh, how, what are you crazy? okay. But now you're out on a date, right? And she says, "How old are you?" Uh, <laughs> how old is she? Uh, well, she's uh, she's uh, uh, let's say thirty-two. Oh, then I'm 55. Okay, suppose she's 42. Now I'm 65. Oh, okay. Suppose she's 18. Then I'm in trouble. 
You know, I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 there's an ego part of you, I guess, that keeps holding the age back. I never lied about my age on the air. Right. I always, uh, and part of my reason was, I suppose I wanted to be an example to everybody, is that you can get old and you don't necessarily have to lose your abilities, you know. That's right. And so Which is very true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I was always very, in fact, I, I went on the air in, at, at, on a, a network thing on a syndicated show a couple of years ago. And I said, I'm going to tell you at the end of the show how old I am. But I'm not going to tell you now. Because that will tone how you feel about me. That's right, right. First, first, let me do the show. So I, I will you. let my voice dictate your prejudice about me. All right? Right, right. Uh, and at the end, I told how old I was. And I said, I don't mind telling how old I am because, hell, it's not a, it's no big deal. You know, no, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I mean, I, 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 at 81, I could say I, it's horrible to be 81, and, and all the aches and pains, and, dip, 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 dip. and then I can say, well, I could have been dead at 75. That's right. You know, so uh, That's right. being 81 is, uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, well, you're in great shape at 81. Oh, I'm in terrible shape. Oh, shush. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, shush, you old grandma. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I have. When I think about what I have wrong with me, it's not, you know, you know, neuropathy. I had prostate cancer, which is easily taken care of, and right. you know, so I, you know, n nothing that uh, you know. Uh, and then I, I went out and I got the shot. Oh, I'll tell you the best thing with the shot. Yeah, go ahead. The worst part about the shot too. Get out of the car. I told this to my audience yeah, last night, and uh, so I'm repeating the story. But I'll tell you, I get out of the. We get out of the car. There's a line. It's about going to take about an hour to get to the front of the line, right? Right. We get out of the car. We go up to this woman who is like telling people, "You go back there. You do this. You do that." And we said, uh, "We're we're here. Do we? Uh, how long's the line?" And they said, "Oh, that doesn't matter. You're old." Uh, come with uh, us uh, come with us and they move us right to the front of the line and they say you go to number six you go to number seven and that was for your second shot right yeah i because we went early i got home before i was supposed to get my shot so but you had the appointment yeah and i could have said you know i'm really upset that you think i'm older but i it was just one of those moments where i said the perk. I got the perk. Yeah, you did. I got the perk. Right. You know? And you were just standing in the cold. Well, it was smart. What we did is we had Marjorie. Her leg was bothering her that day. So I said, bring a cane. I said, that might help us. I don't know how it'll help us, but that might help us. Right. So she had a cane with her. And immediately it was, oh, older people, to the front of the line you go. Right? right, and I All think I, I think it had a lot to do uh, with the um, um, uh, you know with the what do you call it? with the with the king. Okay. So uh, you know, it made you look more feeble than you are. Well, you know, if I'm going to get a discount somewhere because I'm older, fine. That's the place to do it, isn't it? You know, but if I'm not going to get laid because I don't lie about my age, I'm going to lie about my age. <laughs> of course, now I'd, you know, my wife, I told her, I said, you got me at a good time in my life. I said, I've never cheated on you. I right. said, but then again, I can't. <laughs> you know, uh, and she says, I wouldn't have wanted to be married to you when you were like back in San Francisco and had the show and right. everything like that because you'd probably be cheating on me like crazy. And I said, absolutely. Without a doubt. That was my nature. That was all our nature. <laughs> you know, it was very... we were the kids who couldn't get laid in high school. Yeah, well, of course, I never could get laid in high school. No. You know, but once I got on radio, women were throwing oh. themselves at me. How was I to... You know, when that first happened to me, and it happened in Houston, Texas, I don't think I... Um, uh, I just couldn't resist it. Okay. Because women never threw themselves at me, and I was married. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I cheated like crazy. I couldn't keep, couldn't help myself. 
I think if I had gotten laid in high school, I would have been a better husband. I agree. Would you Would you Wait, agree to that? Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and I also would have. Because I was definitely sowing my oats through my 20s and 30s. Right. But in high school, you didn't, weren't getting laid, right? No. Because you were, probably that, you were probably that weird little Jewish kid, right? Weird little artistic Jewish kid. Yeah. Let me ask maybe you. maybe autistic. Let me ask you something. And I was thinking last time that I don't like to just talk about me on these things. And I wanted to ask you something. We're going long tonight with you because I always go long with you because you're great to talk to. And right. why not? Uh, you were a mime in Paris. No. 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 I thought you were. No. <laughs> I studied I studied physical theater. Uh-huh. And corporeal mime. Oh now, now wait a minute. Hold on a second. Corporeal mime? Yes. What is that? Where you let blood or something? What is that? Corporeal <laughs> mime. It's where you cover your face. Oh, I see. You cover your face, and it's all about isolation and rotation and inclination, like my head. You know, rotation, inclination, and then... Mm-hmm. So it's three But bars. what do they cover your head with? Uh, like a... Um, what, like a cherry cloth or, or a, a cloth you can see through? Oh, okay. But you can't see my face. Yeah. The body so, does all the work. So why did I think you were a mime? Is it somebody else I know who was a mime? I did pantomime oh, on okay. the streets to make extra that's money. What I, that's what I heard you say, and I thought you said you were a mime, and I figured you were doing get out of the box, you know. For the tourists, absolutely. I got stuck in the box every weekend. <laughs> and then pulled the rope. <laughs> Can you still do the box for us? <laughs> there we go. There it is. Wow, you never lose it, right? Let's hope. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you had it perfect. But you felt there was really a box there when you did that. Yeah. 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 I interviewed uh, Marcel Marceau years ago. He didn't say much. He just said a lot. He was a great interview. Oh, was he really? Yeah, and the people always say, did he talk? Well, of course he talked. That's why it was an interview. Right, right, right. You know, right, I didn't say, right. so how are you? And he went, mm, 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 you know. Right, right, I'm stuck on the wall. Yeah, yeah. No, he, uh, he, in fact, he complimented me. He said, I looked like a young Albert Einstein. Oh, that's a nice compliment. Isn't it, though? Unfortunately, I don't look like an old Albert Einstein now. No, but no, me, me neither. But he was he, uh, yeah, he was very good. I I enjoyed my t my little interview with him, and uh, everybody was just amazed. He's going to do an interview. Yeah, he does them all the time. Yeah, I was amazed. I got to meet him in uh, at UMass Amherst. Mm -hmm. He was doing a show, and I got to meet, I worked I was working with stage crew, and yeah. I got to meet him, and that was pretty cool. That was kind of my catalyst to go to France. Oh, okay. But I didn't want to study, like, just pen. See, like, okay, let me give you an example. There's science, mm -hmm. right? Science. Mm -hmm. There's biology. Mm -hmm. There's um, uh, medicine. There's, you know, uh, what else? What else? There's other kinds of yeah, science. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so there's meme or mime. Mm-hmm. There's corporeal mime. Mm -hmm. There's mask mime. Mm -hmm. There's three quarter mask mime. Mm -hmm. And then there's pantomime. Okay. So pantomime is just a subdivision of mime. Okay. All right. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that all makes sense. Right. And I went to, to there for two years. So I'd have that capacity over my body while I was on stage. So I knew, I knew mm -hmm. stage uh, presence. Okay, so let me ask you, how, how does that manifest itself when you're on stage now? Well, because you think every movement is just, every movement has, has a meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. Like if I start a show like this and I'm neutral, mm -hmm. I'm not promising you anything. But if I start a show like this, I've made you a promise. 
I'm gonna do something to the right. Hmm. So every move I, I make, like when I'm sitting on the stool, I'm sitting there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the stool because a it brings me down lower, so I can say I can say stuff a tall comic can't say, like a big tough comic. Wow! Like I, you know, I can tell tell you to go after yourself, and I'm not really a threat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Now listen, we've run out of time. We've absolutely wow. run out run out of time. You are you are so great. I love talking to you. You're yeah, me too. You're, you. you're smart, and you're you know you're conversant, and uh, and and you were formerly kind of a mime. <laughs> kind of. See you next week. See you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Thanks, folks. Bye, bye. Bye. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, all right. There was Stephen, uh, Stephen Kravitz. See, I'm out of sync now. This always happens because I am waiting. See? Um, see how my sync is off? See? And I wish I could do something about it, but I, I, I'm not able to, except I can get rid of it by uh, going to uh, the, uh, the uh, people on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, because I really even shouldn't come to my uh, you are, picture you are at this so point, right? You know, because it, uh, I'm always out of sync. Would you somebody turn down their audio, please? Thank you. Oh, hello. Not me. Oh, no, no, it's probably, it's Jeff. See you next week. Jeff, just kill your browser, Jeff. Try it. Just kill the browser. Just uh, get rid of it. Okay. Well, and everybody's seeing me out of sync here, so let me do this so at least they will see me in sync. I, I, you've got to do something about that, Jeff. He signed himself no, that's one up. Way. Well, that's one way of doing it. I guess. Is anybody else going to call tonight, by the way? It's only 8 o'clock. What, what do you mean it's only 8 o'clock? Usually so by now there are people there. waiting to go on. On the other yeah. show I do on Monday, just before I go on, there are like 10 people lined up. Uh, not last Monday. But yeah. Last Monday you had some problems. No, I didn't have any problems last Monday. Took a couple extra minutes. Like Charlie sent a message that he didn't have a link oh no point. no no what that problem was i didn't put it up online on my facebook page i didn't no. put the link but no we had tons of people we i were... go to gabnet then i click on the mm -hmm. join the panel thing and it takes me right to zoom and that's how i get on yeah are you uh, somewhere uh, somewhere uh and i don't know where on your on your uh uh, uh on zoom there are past things you've done listed so no, you well, can, I, I, yeah. I installed the zoom program too on my computer yeah but is anybody else going to call tonight or is that it is this it oh well, uh, you, you know, know i mean i do, i just don't know why i'm doing this night show anymore i really I don't, don't know. you know I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if i should just kill it completely this is this is bad where jack has more people than you <laughs> yeah yeah you know yeah. I, you know Usually it takes a few minutes. No, I'm I'm it. insulted too. I'm insulted. You know, I mean, I, I come in here ready to work my ass off. Yeah. Okay. And then people don't call. I mean, that that, that shows no respect at all. And, and maybe nobody wants to listen to me anymore. But I we am do, a but die we do, hard. We do very well on that on that uh, Monday show. Uh, get some very low, high numbers of the downloads and things like that. I always that. watch the show afterwards. Yeah. And a I lot hate of, getting up that early. A lot of people do, uh, yeah. but you know, yeah. uh, why should I? Why should I even do this? I mean, it just makes no sense at all. You know. Maybe you ought to go to two nights a week. No, if I go to two nights a week, then it'll be two nights a week that people aren't calling. You mm. know, I mean, I, I just, uh, I don't, I, I just think it's gotten to the point where nobody cares anymore, and it's, ins it's insulting to you me. You were, I mean, you know, you were here, like Phil had said one time when. You had them take over. Mm -hmm. You were here for everybody during COVID. And now when people are getting their life back, 
Yeah, they don't they, give a shit about you know, me. They, yeah. they abandon you, and that sucked. Yeah. There are... Oh no, here, Jeff. Oh, okay, you're okay now. You're all Alex right now. said to you, Jeff, to kill the browser. You need a plastic gun. You just shoot the browser. Boom. Yeah, shoot the browser. Uh, sure. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I don't know. You know, I don't know what to do here. I, uh, you know, I need more people than this to yes. have a discussion. You know. Well, we we had Larkin. He showed up last night. Well, that was very nice of Larkin. But I'm just saying, last night it Brian was. Brian was here last night for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Brian wasn't here last night. Wasn't he? No. The night before, maybe. No. No, he yeah, was Brian... on the Monday show. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All but, right. Well. You know, I just uh, that's I, I just I think I think it's sad that a lot of these people felt that you helped keep us all together during COVID. And now COVID's not over, but, you know, I mean, you know, people abandon you and that sucks. Yeah. I, and I, uh, and I, I, I personally feel bad about it and it's very hurtful to me. You know, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, I don't know what to do about it, you know, and, uh, why don't you just do a Monday and a Friday show? Like I think Phil suggested that to you. No, I don't think that's a good idea. No, I, no, I don't okay. think that's that's not a good idea. Here's an old friend of ours, Tommy Amaguchi, who is calling. Oh, yeah, all He's the way from Berkeley. Us. Yeah, you can count on Tom. You know, is it, how's Berkeley tonight, Tom? I, yeah, wait, wait a minute. He's got it. Yeah, how's everything in Berkeley tonight, Tom? Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do I? Oh, oh! I, those are earphones you have in your ears. I thought you were yes, wearing my earbuds. I thought you were wearing earrings. You no, know. those are my. They sort of do look like earrings. <laughs> my uh, my uh, earphones cable wore out, and I went out and I got it replaced with the earbuds, and I love them. Yeah, but I, you, I, I just, I really do. Uh, I'm you. using them on my Mac and my phone and my you iPad. Know, you, you know what the problem is? They're too. Yeah. They're too expensive. Now I get these. These are mm -hmm. called sound peats. Okay. Yeah. Uh and they are the sound is magnificent. And they're they're thirty nine bucks. They're like Bluetooth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're Bluetooth. Yeah. Are your yours a Bluetooth, right? Right. You know what I can't do? I have a Bluetooth adapter I can put in my headphone jack, but there's a delay on them. Huh. Mm -hmm. So so I can't use them. I would use these on the you know, on the show. I use my my uh, computer speakers. I got yeah. some Altec Lansing speakers that are great, and they sit across from me and face back. So yeah, that yeah. And, and the microphone and the camera are built into the one thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, these are uh, these are really these are really I I really recommend these. These are I mean, all with I've the been... lack of people coming. Maybe you ought to see if Robert wants to come back. I'm kidding. Robert. Yeah, Robert Natali. I'm kidding. Oh, no, well, no, he has to. He's never been. I've never kicked him off the show. He. I know. He left on his own. He extricated himself from the show. Yeah. Well, and you know, and uh, you know, I can't do anything he, about that. He's a smart guy. It's un unfortunate that he uh, his feelings get hurt so easy. I mean, when I first got on the show, I made a joke about New Jersey, and he had a cow over it. <laughs> and you know, and that well, was that was so I, funny. I'm from. Hmm? I, I, I'm from New Jersey. You can make jokes about New Jersey with was, with me because I make joke. I make jokes about New Jersey. Yeah, well, it was a nothing joke, and yeah. it just you know early on, of my first like three weeks into it, you know, he like came unglued on me, and I'm like, God, oh, what's the big deal? Yeah, here's, yeah. here's Jeff. I, here's we, Jeff again. Just made up, you know, and yeah. uh, so to speak, and mm -hmm. he apologized, and I said, you know, sorry, it wasn't meant to be. Hurtful to New Jersey. I mean, you know, and he said, no, 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 it's okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm from uh, Camden, and one of my favorite uh, New Jersey jokes is from John Stewart. And he said, uh, Camden is the place where uh, people from Newark go just so they won't feel so bad about living in Newark. <laughs> I love that. Camden's I've been to a Newark and I've been to Perth Amboy. Cam Camden's a pretty terrible town. Yes. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, had a I had a friend that lived there. Even the people, little... if, if I'm, I'm not insulting anybody, because even the people in Camden would agree with me. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so uh, no, we were just. Uh, you, do you think it has to do with the fact that with COVID's over with and nobody wants to have anything to do with me because they're not stuck indoors? I have no idea. Yeah, I have yeah, no idea why it's happened. It's well, just, you know, yeah. because COVID's somewhat over with. I mean, uh, Larkin's back at work. Yeah, Brian's Brian's working more. Mm -hmm. um, so I think some of that. Yeah, but I mean, there should be a lot of other people out there listening who have never I mean, called the show, who certainly, if you want to call the show, you just go over to uh, uh, GabNet, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And then over on the right-hand side of the page is a big uh, big thing that says Zoom there. Mm -hmm. And you just click on that, and it puts you, puts you right on the show here. It's yeah. all it takes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a couple things going on. Uh, one is I've been attending a lot of evening me meetings, mm -hmm. made me unavailable. Yeah. yeah. And two, I live in a house with other people. Right. And sometimes there's a lot going on here that right now it's sort of quiet. Yeah. But other nights, not so quiet. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. You know. I don't feel bad. I'm in my office and it's a mess looking at Tom's office or whatever he's in. That's my bedroom. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Jeez. I have a very neat uh, background here. Uh, oh, yeah. My bedroom is, the rest of the house is immaculate. I mean, I have, you know, a, a, a maid that comes in and everything. But I mean, you know, I just, mm -hmm. I mean, this is my, 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 the small room in the house. And I turned it into my office and it's a mess. But It's my, my bedroom and my garage. Now, this is somebody, oh. I think this is somebody new. I've mean, never had this person on before. But you see, I said go over to the uh, gabnet.net yeah. and click on it. Did, is that what you did, Chip? Wait a minute, connect your audio. Yeah. yeah. Did Is that what you did? Did you go over to Gabnet and click on that link? Me? Yeah, you, Chip. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, okay. So to see how simple it was for Chip. Now, you've never called the show before, right? Or have you? No, I haven't, but I've listened quite yeah. often. I was wondering well, if you had ever called before. Maybe maybe I didn't notice you because you grew a beard or something, you know. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> where, are you, where are you calling from, Chip? Uh, North Idaho. North Idaho. Okay, we've never had anybody call from North Idaho. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Matt Duckworth. Now, Matt has called before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, See, beg and they will come. Yes. Yes. Here's Matt Duckworth. Uh, who? Let's uh, wait until he his picture comes up here. Um, we need a picture, Matt. Hmm. Matt. Working on it. Hey, working on it. <coughs> working on it. Uh, there we there go. How you doing, are. Matt? Hey guys. I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, oh, uh, you know. I've been I've been lurking in the corner watching you guys. Uh, lurking in the corner, watch. Uh, okay. Seattle, Washington. Oh, Seattle, Washington. Oh no, no, no you yeah. called like last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Last time I last time I called, you guys were watching a demo of someone putting a condom on. What? I was. We were watching. You're watching a demo of a condo. How, how to put a condom on? A condom on. Oh, that's right. The, the well, we didn't put it on the he, the. We didn't put it on the show here because I don't know how YouTube would react to me playing it. But there's this YouTube video of how to put on a condom with a guy with an erection, and That's it's right. on YouTube. So if I played it, would they then say I couldn't play it because it's censored material or whatever? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, the, the way I found it, I mean, I didn't find it. I oh, I know why you found it. Yeah, well, okay. I, yeah, his penis was yeah. Not that right. there's anything wrong with that, uh, Alan. <laughs> okay, thank you, Alex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but um, I'm at the age where you know I don't need to do that very often. Put condoms on. Well, I I have a problem because with all the operations I've had on my prostate, uh, they won't stay on. You know, yeah. so it's a it's a I get it real problem. Yeah. Well, no, there's no joke there. That's true. I know. I yeah. believe you. I mean, I'm not <laughs> even going to put on a condom because if I'm insulted by people not calling this show, I'm going to be more insulted by the condom not getting on. 
<laughs> yeah. But you know, I Never the way I the way I look at my penis is over my belly. But I the way I look at my <laughs> penis is it had many good years. Okay, so mine, mine too. It's kept me happy. It, yeah. So years. you know, I think uh, I I think that people you know men women don't understand men and their penises really. I don't think uh, fully. Um, I was going to write something about this, and just you know the relationship that we have to that. We're, we're very, we're very centric on that part of our body. Uh, would anybody disagree with me on that? No. Well, no. I remember I you used to write once in a while. What? You used to write. <laughs> I used to write. Well, when I wrote for Hustler, I wrote every month. That's right. You know, yeah. every month. But I never got around to this topic, you know, and I and I was thinking about it one night and I went, you know, when you're growing up, especially when you're in that period of your life, like in your teens, going into uh, early uh, 20s, uh, you're just so full of your hormones, you're just raging. And so everything is almost centered on that part of your body. Now, I may be wrong. Maybe I'm just a, a weird guy, but I don't think so. Uh, I think you're right. And as you get older, you become, you know. Then you, you want to find you, out more about the girl. You don't want to just. Well, no, but also as you get older, um, um, you get back some of your dignity. You know, yes. so that, that, that was. Tom switching places. Hmm. Well, it, it, where, what happened to Tom? Where did Tom, he, was, he went blank. And oh, gee. Nobody calls me, and then I don't get well, somebody there. He'll be, he'll be back. So, <laughs> so anyway, what do you do, Chip? Uh, I'm retired. You're retired. Well, that's a good profession. How old are you? You don't look that old. Yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> I'm 61. 61. <clears throat> oh, 61. Why'd you retire at 61? A lot of people, well, yeah, a lot of people are retiring early now because they're being forced to retire. You know? My parents are in their 80s and they started having some troubles. My dad has seizures and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. So I moved in with them to help them out. Oh, that's very nice. It's very mm-hmm. nice. And, um, and, and what did you do when you I weren't retired? I was in auto parts. Uh, auto parts. What, selling them or making them or uh, warehouseman. Warehouseman. Oh, okay, good. Because uh, I wouldn't. You could talk about auto parts, but I wouldn't know what you were talking about. Because uh, me neither. I could just tell you the numbers and look. Oh, it I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're in Idaho, in the northern part of Idaho. In the central and southern part of Idaho, it's a hot spot for COVID. What's it like in the northern end? Pretty much all of Idaho. Uh, for our population here, we're pretty much at the top of all states. Really? It finally wound up there, right? You know, It's been here because we, we may be closed down for two months here, mm-hmm. and now nobody wears masks or cares about anything. Well, you know, I read something very distressing, that our new mayor... I can't remember his name now. I keep forgetting it. You know, mayor elect. The mayor, our new mayor, has announced that he's going to do away with the mask mandates in in the grade schools, in spite of the fact that it's been shown that te- that uh, grade schoolers are one of the largest groups getting COVID now. You know, they tend not to die. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, they tend not to die. But I saw something tonight that was kind of interesting about some. A teenager or something who, uh, not teenager, but a grade schooler who got it. And the after effects, the, what do they call it? The, the um, long haul. The long haul, even for kids, is terrible. It's horrible. There was this one girl who was a teenager and she was a dancer. She dances. And she says she get she can't keep her breath when she's dancing now. Even though she's over COVID, you know, so there are yeah, long haul effects. Long term effects on some people. Yeah, it's 
really bad news. So it's about time that you know we started uh, we started getting serious about this thing. But what, what do you think was the problem in Iowa? Why didn't weren't people serious about it? Didn't they say the people in the rest of the country were dying? In Iowa, he's in Idaho. Idaho, excuse me. Oh, uh, it, it's very Republican up here, and so they they don't believe in the vaccine or masks or anything i don't know you know what i don't get i i am yes because because of my parents good Mm -hmm. i I don't get have you been vaccinated yes Uh, yes. okay so yeah you're you're in good shape Uh, but the thing that really got me is that that why it became a political issue i mean let's say you're a republican your guy donald trump went out and got the money to get these things out onto the marketplace you know so I mean, why? And even he says, "Get get the vaccination." Well, after he was president, he started saying that. Well, no, he he he's not. Or after he wasn't wasn't right. president. Yeah, while he was president, he didn't do jack shit. You know. Exactly. Yeah. How's it doing okay, up there? Well, I think we know Chip is not a Republican. It, it doesn't seem like. How he's can you a, tell? It, it, it's just. <laughs> It's the color just, of your hair. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just a, a <laughs> instinct we. At have. least I'm I'm jealous. I mean, you got all this nice long hair, and I got nothing. And we're a year apart. I'm 62, so. Well, I got long hair, but I shave it all off. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Matt, uh, up in uh, up in your neck of the woods, up in Seattle, how's the COVID situation? Is it pretty well uh, under control? I think it's <clears throat> under pretty good control. I, I see masks everywhere. I mean, people people are really diligent about masks here. And we have a new law, which I was going to ask you guys. Uh, the new law here is that when you go to a restaurant, <clears throat> you have to show your proof of vaccine. Yeah, we have to you. do it here, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, You know, but, okay. the, the Bay Area doesn't do that except for San Francisco. In San Francisco, you go to a bar, restaurant, hotel. You got to show it there. And... Uh, I don't know. I'm. I have mixed feelings about that. I guess. Uh, I do you know what I just. I just got a message on my iPhone. I'm, uh, the thing I'm getting mad about with the iPhone is it pesters you. Yes, it Listen does. to this. Your bedtime is approaching. You should consider going to bed. <laughs> what? Was nice enough to send you that. What? No, no, no. That that's. That's Apple. It's their oh. app. They're, and, and I keep turning this bedtime app off. And now that I turn the bedtime app off, <clears throat> it looks like they're starting to send me notes just saying, well, you should go to bed anyway. You know, it would be fun. <laughs> I mean, I just hate it. It's like, like I, I, my f- Apple uh, phone has become my mother. You know, wash, uh, they have their wash your hands thing. I had to turn that <laughs> off. I have an <laughs> Apple phone. And I turn it all off too. Yeah, but so, what I was oh, going to say is that here in New York, what makes it very easy. Oops, I have to then. I have to do this. You have it on your phone. I have it on. Yeah, my phone. well, because this thing is bad. Uh, it the New York one. It goes. It goes weird, and then you have to reset it, and it, it goes okay. And that's what we have. See. Yeah, we have. And, and we if, have I, if, I, nice if I, if I, if I, if I. Double up on that, up comes a barcode, a QR code. We have we have yeah. one that's just text, and yeah. it says your your name, your date of birth, and then it talks each each vaccine and what vaccine you got. Yeah, well, like, it, I, mine I says what vaccines we got, but it doesn't include the one we got. Uh, it says vaccine scene dosage doses two, but it doesn't get my third one on there. Mine came up. I have all of mine on mine, and it has a barcode on it now. Uh, now, how, how did you get that QR code? It, it's a thing. It's a QR thing. That we. It, it's called here in New York an Excelsior Pass. I don't know. What but I got a third for. dose, and they never registered it with the state. So, so it's a state-run yeah. thing to get that code. Yeah, yeah. They didn't register okay. it with the state, so it says I only had two doses. But I do have a piece of paper that says I have the third dose. So. Hmm. Yeah. They, hey, um, Alex, they, I know you have uh, this. Uh, this is oh, wait, uh, hold on a second. What, what, uh, let me turn that off. I accidentally hit the thing. What'd you say? Jeff? You know the the wrist mm-hmm. stuff that we have. Uh, the, the Apple, Apple watch. What do they call it? The watch. watch. Yeah. Yeah. So the other day, 
I kind of fell down. I was. And it, it tells you where you fell down. Oh, yeah. Not only did it tell you down, it's just, do you feel all right? Do you think you want to go to the hospital? <laughs> yeah, but it also, it also you asks up? you if you want to dial 911. Yeah. 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 No, I, that's, that's good. You know, it's terrific. But sometimes it's happened to me when I wasn't exactly falling down. I just something happened and I did a jerk or something and it went up. You, you yeah. hit probably. You just hit your watch. Yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. But I got. I've got. I'm, I went up to the uh, uh, up to the pharmacy the other day and I told them. I said I uh, they haven't registered my my third dose, and I may go back to them again. And because I think they never sent in the information to the state, you know, so I'm gonna. Uh, go talk to them because I think mm -hmm. something should be done about it. I mean, I just like to have the third one registered. If not, I'll go get a fourth one and have it registered as my third. You know, big deal. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, what happened to me today, this was, I, I had to have a blood test because I have, my, have low blood plate, uh, my platelets are slightly low. Now it's probably maybe because from the radiation or whatever. So I had to go, my doctor said, would you redo your test again, do your blood test again? And he sent me a thing and I had to go up to the blood place, the Quest Diagnostics. And uh, I go up there, I walk all the way up there, it's a half a mile. And I get up there and I sign in and I suddenly realize I left the thing from my doctor, the actual, you know, script from the doctor at home. So it said, well, you have 23 minutes so I ran all the way home, a half mile, got it, came back, and finally got my got the blood draw. But when I got back there, they said, "Oh, well, you're not you're not in the queue." And I went, "Well, I should be in the queue. I signed in." And they said, "Well, it didn't register." I said, "You better fix your goddamn machine." You know, so I had that problem. What happened? To, what happened to? Uh, God, what happened to? Uh, huh. Oh. I hope he wasn't. Yeah, you lost, I hope he you wasn't lost the other guy. unhappy with the discussion we were having when I was bringing up penises. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, Tommy Amaguchi, are you, are, did you leave because you were bothered by the discussion, or did you just get knocked off or something? Let me know. Uh, Alex, that guy, that, that name sounds familiar. Was he in San Francisco? Yamaguchi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. is a fan of mine from the San Francisco days and uh, has followed me all along. And he's one of my, I think, I would say, favorite fans, you know? Is he, is he a politician? Or something? No, 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 no. Oh, no. okay. The name just sounds so familiar. No. Uh, he's just a, a really good guy, you know. But I, I don't know what happened to him. He didn't come back, so I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm kind of giving up on this. This is, you know. But um, so uh, everything's fine where you're 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 at up there in the, in. We see the thing is about uh, as opposed to Chip's place, which is very conservative and right wing and Fox douchebags. Okay. Uh, where you're at in Washington, they're very liberal up there, right? Yeah. You know, so they probably have a, just a, a, a massive amount of people who got vaccinated. I mean, when this whole pandemic thing hit, if you had told me this is how it was going to be, I would have said you're crazy. No one would ever behave like that. Well, what what is this ridiculous? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know. Pandemic. I don't know why <laughs> it became a political thing. It's so stupid. It, it's stupid. It makes no sense at all. And I don't understand it. And I don't know what the, what the hell happened, you know? I always thought that Trump was going to, like, take a real heavy hand and you all have to wear a mask and really come down on everybody. But he took a complete opposite of that and just ruined it. Just ruined well, it for everybody. He tried everybody. to represent that it didn't exist. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Or it was going to be over in a week. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. oh, this is just like any other flu. It'll come and go. 
Yeah, the couple of guys in the had corner. It. But, it's you know, I, in spite of all of that, I mean, how it became a political issue, I'm not going to take it because I, I have a right to, to my body and so on. Well, so do I. And I have a right to stay well. And if staying well means you get a shot as well, then you better do it. Because, uh, you know, if you're not getting a shot, I'm, I'm 80, almost 82 years old. And, if, you know, and uh, you're trying to kill me if you don't get a shot. Right. Yep. Right? It's, I mean, I think. High risk for you. And people say, well, they can't make laws of making people get these things. And I go, yes, they can. We have public safety laws. You know, uh, why is it that we can't smoke in a public place anymore? Because it's a health hazard. Absolutely. So it, this comes under the same kind of thing. You know, so what, what, is, what is that all about? I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I don't have anything to talk about, being honest with you. Anybody have something they want to talk about? Oh, I got something I can throw out. Good. What do you guys, what do you guys think about the the Astro World? Uh, what do you want to call it? Tragedy. Yeah. A lot of people are suing. Oh for yeah. PTS for PTSD. They're not even really injured and. Well, there are a I lot of yeah. There are like about a hundred lawsuits against Live Nation and uh, Travis. What's his name? Uh, I'm trying really to remember the name of the of the rap artist. I'd never even heard of him, but until this it, it, happened. I know, I know. If you're if you're over the age of of 18, you don't know who the guy is. You don't even know who it is. Well, he's right. he's uh, um, uh, what's his name? You know, uh, the, the non Kardashians. The uh, uh, I mentioned. Kanye? Well, no, 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 no. The non Kardashians, the, the sisters who are not Kardashians, but they're oh. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I know who you're talking about uh, Jenner. Jenner's, Jenner's, uh, yeah. Kylie Jenner. That's her boyfriend. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No wonder he's popular. So anyway, how do I know this? I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the other Jenner. I don't know, but I think it is Kylie Jenner's boyfriend. Uh, uh, actually, her her uh, daddy father. You know, but anyway. Uh, there were, uh, I think, a hundred suits filed, and there were only nine people killed. So I wondered what those right. other suits were. And you're saying they're for PTSD, right? The company I work for, uh, we handle the documents for attorneys, and that's how I know they're all coming in. They're pouring in uh, of these litigations, and a lot of them are PTSD. But you're not getting which... them at your office, though. We we just we handle the paper the the documentation. For the, for oh the, really? Uh, firms, yeah. So that's why I kind of got the firsthand knowledge of. of mm. I wasn't. Ex I wasn't never expecting to see this kind of volume, and um, I just don't know how I feel. I think I would. I mean, until you're in that situation, I don't know if I was at that concert. It would have been traumatizing, but I don't know that I would feel right about suing for it. It just seems like people. Are well, I would sue for it if I had somebody. Uh, if I was, you know, who was my son or daughter who was killed in that situation. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes. But the people who are standing, you know, 30, 40 yards away, they're saying they had PTSD just because they, they saw this. I don't know. No, no. I guess I don't, I don't know until I was in that situation. But Well, you know, I mean, how do you know you have PTSD? That, that's a yeah. long-term thing that happens after the fact. You go to a war. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been you get involved a in a war, and you come back home, and you have PTSD. You don't yeah, have PTSD. Three days later. You don't have PTSD <laughs> three day, three days later, right? Right. Right. You know. Um, well, what? You know, certain people during World War Two, mm -hmm. they came back from the war, and they were mentally incapable to to work. Uh, 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 absolutely. To to, absolutely. to even to be function with their family. And yet what do we do to these people? Did we did we help them? I think we tried to. I don't know how much we tried to help well, them. Probably not you, very you go much. Back, you go back to take the, the um, uh, people came back from the Vietnam War. Some of them just casualties of that war mentally. Uh, yeah. We did nothing. Nothing for them. You know? 
But and the suicide rate for them right now, I guess, is really high. I, there was a figure. Uh, <clears throat> I think they said it was twenty a day. Does that sound right? Listen, I you know I don't know how anybody can go into a war and come back and not be mentally shattered. Okay, yeah. if every day. You're look, you, you think that's going to be your last day, and there are bullets flying everywhere all the time. And your job is to kill people. And your job is to kill right. people. Yeah. 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 And then we bring them home, and we give them minimal help at VA hospitals or whatever. But really, I mean, um, uh, I, wasn't it Ronald Reagan when he was governor of California that closed down the mental facilities yeah. that these people were being yep. served by? Yes. You know, I mean, what me, you know, I mean, uh, so, I mean, I, why aren't we responsible for the people that we send off to war? Yeah, well, you know, around here, I'm sure in New York, too, a lot of homeless veterans. Why are we, why are we not taking care of the vets? Well, I, I, you know, it's a good problems. discussion to have, although we are, we, oh, no, we still got another 25 minutes till it's still Veterans Day. And by the way, mm. nobody has called tonight. Well, that's one thing, but nobody's well, called tonight to uh, thank me for my service. Well, thank you for. I didn't, were you in the service? <laughs> I was in the military. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, thank you for your service. He was the navy. I was in the navy. Oh, wow! Well, you were a you, cook you, or something. You know where I was stationed? <laughs> I was stationed in one of the most hellish places on the face of the earth. Hawaii, Hollywood, California. <laughs> really. At the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, oh. yeah. But I, but I, I served two years in the Navy. Well, nice. You know. Okay, so yeah. again, I'll say thank you for yeah. your service. Oh, here's Tom again. Uh, I don't know what happened to Tom, but you know, I, here he is again. The garage door went up or something. But yeah, what? <laughs> well, yeah, what happened, Tom? A phone call. Oh, a phone I had to call. take a really important phone oh, okay. call. Right. I apologize. I thought you were mad but at I... us or something. You know? Oh, no. No, I just like the phone started ringing. I said, oh, no, I got to talk to this person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're talking about about this, uh, this uh, uh, thing that happened in Las Vegas with the concert. And um, the people, uh, I guess nine people who got trampled. In Texas. It was in, in Houston. Texas. It was in right, Houston. Yeah. Did I say Houston? No, what did I say? You said, no, Las, you said, Vegas. said Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, Las Vegas. Oh, I'm sorry. It was in Houston. No, they just do mass shootings in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, uh, and, and there were nine people killed in this incident. However, uh, Matt was saying that over 100 people are now filing uh, for lawsuits. Ha lawsuits against Live Nation and the rap artists uh, mm -hmm. because they say they have PTSD. And we're trying to figure out if this thing happened like, what, Saturday night, Friday night, something like that? If you can actually figure out you have PTSD by Thursday. <laughs> Now that I hear you say that, it really does sound ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, P D P T S D. You could have stress over it, or well, you could be you, you could be feelings because uh, it's something you, bad. You but, could be bothered by the incident, but to right. actually have P T S D, I think takes a t certain amount of time before it wells up in you. Yes. From what I know of P T S D, it's not it's not something uh, that you catch on Thursday and Friday. You've got you're in bed crawled up in a ball, you know. Uh, so when, uh, when I Google it, it says, to meet the criteria of PTSD, symptoms must last longer than one month. Hello? Okay, yeah. so you can't it's sue until, a week. You can't sue until the a month week. is over. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know. And it says the, uh, the symptoms must be severe enough to interfere with the access of your daily life, such as relationships or work. Yeah. So, so, so you've got you to really, so there, there are criteria there. But I mean, I guess yeah. it's just everybody decides they're going to sue. You know, they figure Live Nation has deep pockets, but actually they yeah. don't have deep pockets. They have deep insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that performer, he really screwed up because they say he kept singing for like five songs. Before well, there, he there, yeah, but there, there are, there are excuses being made, and they're logical excuses. I, I don't know if you've ever been up on a stage. Uh, I have. 
But when you're on stage, all you can do is hear the audience. You can't mm -hmm. see the audience. You've got spotlights in your eyes. Right. You ever notice right. that when people look out in the audience and they're performers, they go like this, you know, mm -hmm. because they've got yeah. lights, you know. Right. So I will buy the notion that he didn't see anything happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so far as hearing anything happening, these artists wear electronic earphones, very really sealed earphones. So the only thing they're hearing is the music that's playing or the track they're, you know, they're singing to or whatever. So th there is a good argument that he didn't know what was going on. That he, he was kind of in this bubble, you know. But everybody, because he's up there on stage and you see pictures of him on stage and everything, he could, he, how could he not know what was going on? Now, there's somebody off the side of the stage yelling at him, stop singing. There's people getting killed out there. And he just kept singing. And it looks terrible, but he probably didn't hear that person because of the earphones. You know, they're, 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 they're literally sealed right. into the ear. They're molded to their ears. Uh, and you can't, uh, he probably couldn't hear anything. All he can hear is the music that's being played. And the same thing goes for his group. They're all, they've all got the, the electronics too. So mm -hmm. I, I will give him a little bit of leniency on that. Okay. I don't know that he was being particularly callous today. He says he's very sorry for the people that got killed and so on. And so, well, of course you're going to say that because you don't want to get sued, mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to get sued anyway. I think one yeah. of the funnier things with uh, that type of music is Eminem, famous rap artist. Uh, he goes to court. His wife takes him to court for divorce. And she says, you know, um, I, I want to divorce from him. He's crazy and, you know, or something like that. And the judge said to him, uh, you think he's crazy? He, he sings in his songs about putting a woman in a trunk of a car and pushing it into a into a river or something. Yeah, like you that. didn't you didn't get the hint early? Yeah, really. That yeah. was my thought yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. People. I've never listened to Well, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I'm happiest with in my life, and that is that this court thing is over with. Huh. That it's yeah. over and done with. Because mm -hmm. I gotta tell you, man, the only people that make money are lawyers. I mean, you got to realize there were three lawyers on this case, all right? And they're then sitting there in a courtroom for eight hours at 550 bucks a piece. How, how much Hour. money was being spent in that courtroom that day just for lawyers? You know? Uh, the three lawyers were your lawyers? Oh, no, 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 no. I had two oh, okay. lawyers, but I was only paying for one to be on duty. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it, it, you know, I just, I would not want to, I would not want to sue somebody. I don't want to have to go through that. You don't, the worst part I would say is not the cash that is no longer in my pocket or in Marjorie's pocket because it came from both of us. But uh, the, what, what the worst part of it was, was having to sit in that goddamn courtroom and hear this thing going on, none of which you understand. <laughs> because they're all speaking lawyer talk. <laughs> you know? And and you're going, what? I mean, I had to ask my... I had two lawyers, and I had one that was his assistant. And I kept leaning over him and going, what's going on here? What is that? And, you know, I had no idea what's going on. You know, I, I wish I, I would, you know how you have translators at the UN? I'd like to get one of those yeah. guys to like have, uh, put earphones on <laughs> and then he can just tell me what they're saying in common speak. Yeah. Because, because Hopefully they, you'll uh, never have to go through that well, again. Well, they all have their own language, right? Just right. like most businesses, people do have their own language. But in this case, it's. I remember when my parents didn't want me to know what they were discussing. They started talking to each other in Yiddish. Okay? It's the same thing. Lawyers get up, they talk lawyer speak, and it's meant, I think it's meant to lock you out. So you don't know what the hell's going on. But I thought I thought this guy I, th I thought this guy was losing our case because of something he was doing. And I found out the next day that it was all a ploy to get them to fold, and they did. 
and we went home winners. That's a you good know. lawyer. Yeah, very good lawyer. Well, I don't know if you've ever served on a jury before, but I, I've served on three. And talk about boring. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. It's, it's just, it's got, have you ever done it, uh, Tom? Have you ever served on a jury? Unfortunately not. I would love to serve on a jury. And the times when I can't, I've come close. And for one reason or another, uh, either I wasn't able to because I had a trip I was trying to get to, a business-related event, or, or I just, like, the lawyers didn't think I was going to, you know, it was funny. There was one. There was one case where the judge instructed everyone there were no that if there were no other witnesses that we had to accept the uh, the police officer's word as complete truth. And I says, I just can't do that. I mean, I because because police officers are human. You know, they make mistakes. I, you know, and I just can't accept it. So I got turned off of that one. And then another one, I had a drug, drug driving case uh, involved in the Berkeley police. And I admitted that I, you know, know a number of Berkeley police in our national night out events. And I was disqualified there. So one case, I thought I was at too anti police. And the other thing, I was too, too friendly to police, too pro police. So both times I got I got uh, kicked off or, or prevented from serving, but I would love to serve on a jury. Yeah, you know? take it for, take it from me. You don't want to do it. It's, you don't, I was you on a six it. week trial, and um, it's so boring, and it also feels almost like you're watching a play or something because everything seems very scripted and rehearsed. Well, the funny, the fun, um, yeah, the funny story. There's no, there's I, no, spont the fun, there's no spontaneity. The to funniest it. story I have yeah. about that is the one time I had to go down and serve jury duty. You just sit in this room for two days mm -hmm. straight while they, it's like they, you're like lambs to the slaughter. You, 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 come on, to go to this courtroom. You, 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 go to this courtroom. So I am there with, uh, believe it or not, Steven Soderbergh. He gets called for jury duty. You know who Steven Soderbergh is, everybody? Director, yeah. The director, director. The movie director. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, I don't, we're kind of hanging out a little bit, you know, whatever. And because there's nothing to do except talk to each other, if that, or you bring your iPad and read it, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we go, we're, we're both called to go to this one courtroom where they're having, you know, they're going to see if we can be a member of the jury, all right? And so uh, Soderbergh gets up and he says, I can't serve on this jury. Why, says the judge, he said, because I have a movie I have to make in Cuba. Oh. <laughs> now, I don't know if I told him, well, I got a radio show to do tomorrow with Sirius XM. I don't think they would necessarily consider that an excuse. And I think making a movie in, in, uh, in, in Cuba, uh, because he was doing the Che movie, I think it was. Yeah, Che Guevara, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, it's not really a great excuse. Now I get up, and it's a it's a drug thing, and the judge said, "Is there any reason why you shouldn't be on this jury?" And I said, "Well, because I don't believe these drugs should be illegal, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I could find myself uh, have the ability to find the guy guilty, okay? Because I'm against uh, making these drugs illegal." Mm -hmm. And he said, next. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, so now as I'm walking out, Soderbergh has the colossal gall to say to me, boy, was that a lame excuse to get out of jury duty. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and said, and yours wasn't? You know. I, I got called into jury duty like eight or ten years ago mm -hmm. in the city that I used to work in. And they interview you, you know, yeah. you this, that, the questions. And they said, do you think you can be fair about this? And I said, well, if the guy was arrested by the police, I'll assume that he's guilty. And they, oh, kept, no. you know, and they, and they kept me on the thing. They knew my history. I used to be a police officer. Yeah, and they kept me on the jury. And I'm like, you got to be nuts. I'm the I'm worst person in the world for a <clears throat> defendant. So, well, that, you know, 
in, in my case, you know, uh, as I said, there's one case, and it was involved. It was a really interesting case. I mean, it involved a a shooting in a downtown Oakland nightclub, and I had actually been in the newspaper, so I was really curious about this case. Mm -hmm. When when I made my response, uh, you know, they they let me sit down and. And then another guy right after that was inspired by my response and he responded the same way. And then they let him sat down. And it wasn't until several juror interviews afterwards that they actually said, we're gonna dismiss him and him. You know, yeah. they sort of waited uh, before doing the dismissal. Uh, and, you know, and I remember one other person there, this woman got up and they asked her if she could be fair. She says, I don't know. I just do anything my husband tells me to do. <laughs> and so, and she lasted a, you know, several rounds too, before they dismissed her. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's a strategy in, uh, in the way lawyers decide how to, to select a jury. There's a whole science behind it. I don't oh, there, know if there you are remember. There are jury selection experts. Who work yeah, with the you lawyers. remember the Oprah Winfrey uh, case? That's how she got uh, introduced to to Doctor Phil. Yeah, was because he was in the business of psychoanalyzing prospective jurors and advising lawyers on who to pick and who to mm -hmm. to take it. Yeah. So this was the um, the case where she was being sued for. Yeah, so I think it, was it was by the uh, slander meat, by the meat industry. Meat industry, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that's how she got associated with Dr. Phil. Uh, Chip, have you ever had to do jury duty or? Uh, my whole life, I never got called until I moved to Idaho and I've been called twice. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I was there and they were choosing the jurors and they pretty much asked me one question and said I could leave. Oh, okay. Probably because of my hair or whatever. And then well, the second one was just canceled. Here in New York, the last time they sent me a jury summons uh, uh, for jury duty. Mm -hmm. Uh, I simply wrote them back and said, I'm over the age of 75. And they go, that's it. You don't have to, you know, yeah. the, the, the privilege of age. I think they figure mm. that uh, at 75, life is getting shorter and you have too few years left. Why spend them in a jury room? <laughs> you know. Well, I have to talk to an attorney every day. Why are we there? <laughs> oh, your wife's an attorney. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but she's, what is she in? She does uh, good she work. She was in a ter uh, environmental stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, she does environmental stuff. She's a, she's a good lawyer. Okay. Yeah, and she's, she's really retired anyway, so. Yeah, but, you know, uh, it's the old joke about, you know, what do you call, uh, uh, what's the difference between, uh, what, what do they say? Wait a minute. Uh, 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 what's the difference between a dead snake in the road and a dead lawyer in the road? And the answer is, of course, a good start. <laughs> yeah, so. now, uh, now that Jeff laughed, he's going to get slapped in the middle of the show by Pam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my late housemate used to work for Caltrans. And you remember the old Embarcadero Freeway? Yeah. That uh, got uh, eventually torn down after the earthquake. Sure. Well, then when the process of demolishing it, um, he had a picture that somebody did of some graffiti on the on road and it had uh, lawyers laid 100 miles per hour with an arrow pointing right off the, the edge of the freeway. <laughs> wow. You know, you know what? People don't know this. If you've ever seen pictures of San Francisco, one of the most iconic views of San Francisco was taking a camera and pointing it down Market Street. And at the very end of it was the Ferry Building, which is an iconic mm -hmm. structure. It's been there, I don't know how long has it been there? Forever. Yeah. Forever. But at a certain point, they took a freeway, a, a skyway actually, and built it in front of the uh, Ferry Building. So that mm -hmm. iconic view down Market Street- Doesn't exist. Didn't yeah. exist. Well, the earthquake came along and made a, shall we say, aesthetic judgment. <laughs> yeah. A silver mm -hmm. lining to that disaster. And it yeah. weakened the whole structure and they had to tear it down. And there was the beautiful, you know, ferry yeah. building as I remembered it when I was a kid. 
You could just yeah. look down Earth, Market Street. The, and central, see it. the central Freeway got damaged in one the of the one earthquake. of the classic old film pieces of film of San Francisco was taken the day before the earthquake in really? San Francisco, mm -hmm. and it was a, they simply took a car or horse street or car. whatever streetcar and put a camera on it and drove all the way down Market Street, and you could of course see the ferry building there. And that yeah, you can see it online. It's it's uh, one of the. Um, films that have been uh considered a historic film you know the the film archive yeah, yeah. every mm -hmm. year they they choose a number of films to put in you know for preservation and that's one of the films that they they have and the next archive. day that whole view down the street except for the ferry building were decimated i mean mm -hmm. the, the, you know by the way it wasn't you, you do know it wasn't the earthquake that caused all the damage but it was, it was fire. the fire. Yeah. 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 Eruption gas lines. Yeah, but not, not on the central freeway. The earthquake destroyed that. No, he's talking about the nineteen oh six. Oh. Yeah. Nineteen oh six or what was that like fire. Alex? I it, what was here. it like? Or was it... <laughs> <laughs> and they used to believe they used to believe that the uh the epicenter was up in Marine County. In it fact, up there there's an a, a what earthquake was up trail. There, near... And now they know it was actually the air said it was actually off the uh, the coast uh, from Daly City. Oh, really? Because I used to drive up there all the time, and I, I, I would point out to people, because you could see the fault. You know, it's like a hump in the land. Yep. And I would point yeah, out. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't the the actual epicenter. To, I would point out to people as we were driving. This is the town. I'm trying to remember the name of the town. Alima. Alima. Uh, yeah. well, Alima, which is just like a crossroad. Alima, yeah. I said this was the center of the earthquake, and it was believed, but now no longer, huh? Yeah, well, that's what people believe. That now we have more evidence that actually uh, the south of the city. Yeah, so the, and actually, the, actually, sort of into the Pacific. In the '89 earthquake, the, the one of the part of the fault ran up Sixth Street in San Francisco in the south of Market, and it raised the street up in a lot of places. In oh, uh, in I, the marina. No, but the marina was just a, just you know, got the the shaking and. Well, the, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold fires. on a second, wait a minute. I was, was I was in the middle of the earthquake when it happened. I was going down to vi down to Visadero on the other side of it. Really? And I came back and went down back into the marina to go to my place. And when we pulled up to the apartment, and my girlfriend tried to get out on her side of the car, she couldn't anymore because the curb was up higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Sixth Street was the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sixth Street. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, it, it was it was that was that whole thing was dastardly. It took us a while to, but a year later we everybody had pretty well rebuilt, you know. So I mean, that shows you the resilience of people and what they do. Yeah, well, those same people aren't around now when COVID's out. Yeah, well, they're not getting their vaccines. They're getting deaf. Yeah. Anyway, hey, there's the theme. Uh, I thank uh, Alan for being with us, and I thank Jeff for being with us. And thank you so much, Chip, for calling. I'm sure you heard my plea for callers, and you immediately went over to gabnet.net, saw that Zoom link, clicked on it, and called us, and I really appreciate it, and I hope you'll call again. Uh, of course, Matt, always love having you here. And, and Tom, uh, I, I, I would love to see you more often. Because I, I think, you know, I think the world of you. We're neighbors, know, Tom. I, Call in more often. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, which I'm sure once I do it, we'll be out of sync, right? There we go. Are we out of sync? Yeah, we're out of sync. Okay. Let me, let me hit the end button here and say end meeting for all. Okay. And then as that, as, once I get rid of the... Uh, what do you call it? the uh, Zoom call? It starts to, I start getting better and better and better. Well, I'm still a lot of sync. Anyway, I give up. I've never been able to figure out how to stop this from happening. Okay. Anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, if, you know, and I, I hope more people call. This is really, it's depressing me. Okay. It's really getting me to feel, uh, uh, it's almost insulting. But anyway, we'll hope that tomorrow night more people will call. Uh, by the way, uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see it, yeah, you know what to do.
tell her I love her and tell her I'm out of sync. So fucking what? <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Oh, jeez.